can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. We're all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello and welcome to Cinema Royale, where we talk about films whenever we can. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and along with me are my excellent film aficionados. First up, we got Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by my new Patreon account that I opened. So uh, if you guys would like to support my work, you can go check it out over there at patreon.com slash animat. Yay. Selfless plug. Not- <laughs> Selfless plug. Hey. Hey, we always do these tonight's broadcast. It gives me an open opportunity. Yeah, it, that's fine. You can whore yourself out on this podcast. Go ahead. <laughs> that that's just giving it away. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the <laughs> gal from these. Florida, Star. Hi. Shameless uh, plug. Um. I do movie reviews. I can has movie reviews. I don't know what the fuck my show is. I just take movies and I tell you about them. And then I tell you to go watch them because normally they're good. And check that crap out, you know. I've, I've only done two. I used to do anime reviews and then I kind of retired because I didn't feel I was worthy to do anime reviews. But I've always had a passion for films. So I finally have started doing that. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. And, um... If you're watching this, Morgan will appear somewhere in this episode. You'll have to find him. Question mark. <laughs> Anyways, uh, today is Harrison Ford's birthday. He tur- he turned 72. And we look so much older. I know. Mm-hmm. Wait, he's just 72, dude. Yeah. Exactly. Imagine that. Isn't that? Um. Actually, there's other birthdays today, too, which I couldn't focus the episode on. Uh, also, it's... I, pat- yeah, yeah, I'm on the IMDb page, so I can see it, too. Uh, Patrick Stewart's birthday's today. Today, oh. Patrick Stewart has turned 74. So please write down in the comments section to wish Patrick Stewart a great and wonderful birthday. Oh, my God. My mind went dumb. I thought you were talking about Swayze. I said Stuart. Maybe I, said... I know. I went. There was actually I a very dumb. huge difference there, Sarah. <laughs> I fuck off. It was a P and an S. Okay, it's a quarter to midnight. I'm allowed to have my brain die for a moment. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Up, uh, Tom. I Ken... often have those as well. Stop interrupting, Mike. Sorry. Tom Kenny's birthday is also today. <laughs> Yay! Happy birthday, Tom Kenny. I really don't know who that is. Oh, SpongeBob. A SpongeBob. Oh, okay. And da, 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 da. today is also Ken John's birthday, so wish Miss, Mr. Chow a, a great happy birthday too. This is a big birthday bash. Uh, otherwise, after, today in geek history, we have uh, Last Starfighter was released today in 1984. Gamer 2: Attack of Legion was released in 1996 today. <laughs> Oh, it's also Cheech Mar- Marin's birthday. We got. Uh, uh, hold on, I'll check if there's others. Uh, no, I don't think so. That is it. But yeah, we're the main focus is Harrison Ford, and it's just Harrison Ford is that one actor, and you might know him for the big franchises known as like Star Wars or Indiana Jones, but he's got some films in between that are worth talking about. Like we'll mention on the podcast today. (laughs) So let's start it off with our Canadian, Matt. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start things off with one of uh, Harrison Ford's most obvious roles. Now, there are there's practically two of them that everyone knows him and everyone loves him as, either Han Solo or Indiana Jones, um, which in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Indiana Jones with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, what I can practically say about Raiders of the Lost Ark, I mean, nowadays is pretty much a classic, but I think it really does set the standards as, for those like treasure hunting movies. 
Because, mo- like, number one, like, it's really action-packed. Plus the fact that we we follow great, great characters. Like, not just uh, Indiana Jones, but also uh, Marion as well. Uh, like, that's, a, that's another great character, which also, like, is, is one of the very few examples of, like, a strong female lead as well, from what I recall. Well, it's it's like, at least she's a stronger female lead than uh, the last, uh, the like, I think more than the next Indiana Jones film in Temple of Doom. Um, yeah, so, like, we have great characters, um, great, a- great action, and even a great story where it's, Indiana Indiana Jones has to find something and to like before the Nazis do. So definitely it's it's definitely a great example of a movie that's really engaging, really action packed and all around like this is a great great fun movie. And uh, one thing that I do do want to mention, I I think it's actually because of this film that we actually got the PG-13 rating. I think it's this one because um, it was actually very controversial because um, uh, Steven Spielberg had a really hard time to figure out like which um, like what where does Indiana Jones belong to? Is it like a PG film or is it a rated R film? On one hand, there's no swearing, there's no blood, there's no sex. So families can watch it. On the other hand, that ending scene where they open the uh, Lost Ark, holy crap, that that is pretty much beyond freaky. So they decided to create uh, a rating that's more in between, which is the PG-13 rating. I'm not yeah. 100% sure, but I think, it, I think it's because of this. Yeah, I don't remember which movie, but yeah, no, I know it was because of Spielberg we got PG-13 ratings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says right here on Wikipedia, uh, in the early 80s, there were complaints about violence and gore in films such as Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom and Gremlins, which both received PG ratings. Spielberg, directed, director of Temple of Doom and executive producer of Gremlins, suggested a new rating between PG and rated R. The PG-13 rating was introduced in July 1984. Oh, so there you go. It's about half right then, Matt. Yeah, so, yeah I'm close. It's Spielberg, so... Mm-hmm. You're, you're right. right. Yeah, uh, Indiana Jones is that one franchise where you go back in time and relive the adventures with Indiana Jones. That's yeah, that's a classic that'll never die out. My favorite's still the third one of the franchise, the one before they did Crystal. But yeah, yeah, the Last Crusade. Yeah, definitely. That one is another great one, actually. Mm-hmm. That's mostly because like they're giving it, they're giving Sean Connery like as Indiana Jones' father, which gives, which gives like more development for indiana jones like and it gives uh it gives him more stuff to do so definitely i could definitely see how last crusade is a lot of people's favorites they they and, don't even have a big an age difference between the two of them either exactly yeah oh yeah um, just just because sean had the white hair that's that's the only reason yeah, yeah. um i got a fun fact guess who was originally going to be in indiana jones before harrison oh. ford Tom Selleck. Yeah, Tom like, Selleck. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I was it, about to for, for some reason I was about to say Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Nicolas Cage is Indiana Jones. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, you go on the internet. Nicolas Cage is everything. So is Keanu so Reeves. Keanu Reeves no, is kind of everywhere mostly, too, a little bit. It's mostly Nicolas Cage. Yeah, Nicolas Cage is very uh, meme-ish. He's even, He's being turned into things he shouldn't even be, like Disney princesses. <laughs> See, there you go. Sean Connery is 83, so he's he's barely over 10 years older. <laughs> oh, yeah. Than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think about it. If you think about that in the films, yeah, it kind of throws you off. Um, I, th- I think uh, Indiana Jones' dad had a, had a that's my boy scenario. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that too. I didn't want to mention it, but yeah, took Adam Sandler and uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Indeed. Uh, Did I ever tell you the time that I that I met your mother? We need to visit her in the prison. That's actually a decent impression. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Oh man. 
Okay, yeah, Crystal Skull was a major bullshit. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. <laughs> Especially with the fridge and the nuke. <laughs> that that the, just that's where they jumped yeah. a shark. Yeah, and then the aliens. I think the best scenario I think the best way to one of the best like there are some fun moments. There are some times when it does capture it, but then like things like Shia LaBeouf and the aliens and stuff like that is like it, this is the thing. It's trying to be Indiana Jones, but it doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think in Indiana Jones Five is going to be? Oh yeah, I have no idea. Honestly, are making a fifth one? Mm-hmm. It's rumored, and I. Mm. Yeah. I'm. Indiana Jones Five announced. Yeah, it was announced. Then, they're they're either like recasting in Indiana Jones somehow with a new actor and. No, they still say Harrison Ford for now. Yeah, there there was a rumor at one point they said there was so and so as Indiana Jones, like Zac Efron or something. No, yeah. I I think no for that. I say it's gonna depend on how well Star Wars Episode Seven is. If yes. it does really really well, then they're able to make uh, Harrison Ford do Indiana Jones because he's gonna be he's gonna be Han Solo at his age, so. He can still do Indiana Jones at his age. Exactly. And uh, speaking of aliens, let's talk about his other film from three years ago. This might be backwards to you guys, but it's Cowboys and Aliens. Oh, yeah. I never saw it. I had no interest. Well, that, that this is the, the premise. Is, here's the premise. What if Toy Story has been taken seriously? Hmm. <laughs> Nice. I never thought about that. Nice. nice. Really? I never thought about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically Cowboys and Aliens is that genre mixing film um, with Western sci-fi. It's mostly a Western with sci-fi elements in it. You have uh, Daniel Craig is the lead. And in the beginning of the film, he has no fucking clue who he is. It's like memento kind of thing. He's like, he has to remember who he was and... He walks into town, and, you know, it's like a Western kind of thing. It's like, hey, you're not supposed to be here, boy. And eventually you meet up with Harrison Ford, and he plays this colonel. He's, like, the bad guy before the aliens come up. And he eventually meet, um He just doesn't want him in the town. And eventually aliens pop out of nowhere. And they start snatching up people off the ground. And Harrison Ford sees that... Uh, Dana Craig has like this alien wrist gun. And he's like, "Oh, I gotta have that guy on my side." Oh yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for that, and I went, "Ben 10." Oh yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> I can see that now. Yeah. And oh yeah, with the wrist thing, right, mm-hmm. right? That's what I thought it was originally, because I didn't realize it was it was Western yet. The like either the initial trailer or the teaser trailer. I sincerely went, "Ben 10 got old." <laughs> <laughs> I f- yeah. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was something like that at first. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. I get yeah, it now. it's not. It does. He doesn't really transform into any, any uh, aliens, but he's got. It's like a gun. It's like a, this futuristic alien yeah. gun, and he just. No, like, no, no. I know that was. Yeah. Joke. I know. I was not. <laughs> Fuck. I screwed up the joke. <laughs> um, oh, sad face. Um. So, because um, the aliens take up Harrison Ford's son in the film, and they're like. Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig meet up, and they're like, okay, we have to work together to get our people back, and the whole town comes together, and they have to go after the aliens to get the people back, and the aliens come to Old West America to uh, steal gold, for some odd reason. They're digging for gold, which is, you know, a staple in Westerns, you know, digging for gold. And I, I saw this in the theaters, and I talked about this with my friends at the time, and the same one of my friends saw it, and they're like, oh, "People are made of gold, huh? They're eating people. Uh, what?" And she was so confused about it. I was like, "Dude, he, they're taking gold because it's their fuel source for their spaceship." And it made no sense. But Harrison Ford is this gruff, really gruff. He's got that. What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> kind of, kind of sounds like Harrison Ford. He's got that gruff going on, and it kind of works for him. I mean, you kind of see him as, as this gruff old sheriff, colonel, whatever. 
and there's a lot of it's, 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 there's a lot of good action in it. It's it kind of mixes the special effects very well. I mean, when you get a close up with the aliens, they're very generic generic looking. They're not a fresh new alien. It kind of looks like it's like CGI, but it's like a puppet sometimes, and I don't know. It's really and it's actually based on a graphic novel, which I have not read yet, but it's it's an underrated film. Not a lot of people like it because they nitpick very at the subplots of it. And I'm like, dude, just watch it, turn your brain off, enjoy the cowboys and the aliens. Mm-hmm. You know, the one thing about cowboys and aliens, one of the reasons why it doesn't seem that appealing in general it's just like the concept of having cowboys and aliens that sounds like a movie that they would do like in the 50s like during that era where it's like we're pretty much like pretty much that ray harryhausen era where like science fiction and giant monsters like ruled the cinemas and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like even working on animation look back i actually found them i actually found this movie that's that's pretty much similar to this but a little bit different. It's called The Valley of Guanji. The concept yep. is pretty much cowboys and dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you've heard about a movie that's called Cowboys and Aliens, this would practically fit during that era. For a movie that's, like, in recent, like, for recent years right now, it's like, I don't know, like, something like that, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have taken itself as seriously as it should. Honestly, yeah, I was just gonna say that this film does take it very seriously. It's like it, it's like taking place where it's like, what if aliens do come into the past in the Wild West and stuff, and they take it so seriously, and that there that there there is there is two ways they can do it. They can take it seriously, or they can go cheesy as hell, and it would would have worked just fine both ways, in my opinion. But they went serious, and I thought it really worked out in the end because the characters have good arcs and development in it, and you get to understand the characters as they go through the film. I don't know. It could have worked. Like, they could have given it, like, the Sam Raimi treatment, you know, just cheese it up as it is. It Trust me, cheesiness really works. This is why the Sam Raimi... Excuse me, my stomach is not cooperating. But this is why the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy is remembered today, because of its cheesiness. And how enjoyably cheesy it is. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. I mean, the director, John Favreau, who directed Iron Man, he could have done it any other way. I thought he did good. I thought he did well with it. Or he could have made it a flat-out comedy, just make it a million ways to die with aliens. God. Don't get me started. Did you actually see Million Ways to Die? I've heard. Yes. I've heard a yes. lot of things. I heard a lot of things about it. Yes. It was fucking funny. I mean, you have to go in there realizing this is Seth MacFarlane, so yeah. he's gonna have that humor. If you go in there expecting anything else, you're probably gonna end up being disappointed. But if you can go in there expecting the same humor you saw in Ted and in Family Guy, you'll be entertained. Yeah. It was fucking mm. funny. There was one scene, and it's such a scene you would not think it's that funny, but for whatever reason, it had me and my brother laughing really hard for a while. The scene where he's telling you about all the ways you can die, basically, and then he oh. goes, Come here, I want to show you something. Yeah. And he goes outside. That scene. And yeah. I don't want to say what it is because I want people to check it out. I thought they. Okay, I mean, they didn't show in the trailer. They did. It was a little bit. Um... But yeah, there's another. There's a lot of good cast members in here too. Besides Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford, you got Olivia Wilde. You have Sam Rockwell in it. You have Mr. Krabs in it. The actor. What? Clancy Brown is in this film. Um, Mr. Krabs? Yeah, Clancy Brown, who plays Mr. Krabs in this film. Um, Dude. <laughs> yeah, he's in this film as the um the doctor in here. He's the yeah, it's pretty. It's a stellar cast, and it's, I thought it was really, really fun. Definitely worth a rental mm. or purchase. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. <clears throat> In my opinion. 
Opinions may vary. <clears throat> I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, so eh, maybe. Maybe I'll show it to you sometime. Nah. My turn. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Go on. Oh, okay. Um. Well, I'm I'm a little taut between Working Girl, where he's more supportive role. It's Melanie Griffin who stars in that one. Uh, but I'll probably talk about the other one regarding Henry. It was, for whatever reason, a favorite film of my mother's. And Harrison Ford stars as this ambitious, callous, narcissistic, and just very basically unethical lawyer who's married with a kid. And in the middle of him stopping a convenience store robbery with all this taking place in New York City, he gets shot. Leads him to being in the hospital. He gets brain damage. He's hemorrhaging, a lot of internal bleeding. And he ends up not being able to speak or walk right away. And he has um, amnesia. So he heals. He comes back into his life. But he's a completely different person now. He, he's almost... He's not dumb, but he's more simple compared to how he was. And he ends up finding all of these not-so-nice things that he used to be. And he decided he doesn't want to be that person anymore. Um, you know, it also stars Annette Benning as his wife. And I just found this one out. It was written by J.J. Abrams. It's a 1991 drama. And it's been a while since I've seen it, but I know it is a good movie. It really has a huge amount of character development. That's all this film is, you know. It's literally this, this asshole who through a tragic accident, gets a second chance at life, and of himself, too. And it's that I, I wish I could say more about it. I feel horrible that I can't. It's just, it's been so long since I've seen it, and I was a last-minute guest on this, so I wasn't able to, like, re-watch it for myself. So, you know, I I'm, I'm feel horrible. I'm reading all this from Wikipedia. Yeah, but actually... It, it really is a good film. It is. It you. You know, same thing with Matt said with Cowboys. You you should definitely have a watch if you're any level of a Harrison fan for um, Harrison Ford fan. Harrison check out Ford. regarding Henry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I'm checking this on IMDb right now, and I, I think I actually were, I think I've I might have actually seen it. And um, I will say it's actually very interesting, especially as a Harrison Ford movie, because here's the thing: normally with Harrison Ford, you would mostly associate him. With action. more of these action movies, like yeah. often, like you always see Harrison Ford in a more like all these action scenes and stuff like that. But this is something in which Harrison Ford is like completely out of his comfort zone. Like this is pretty much like after the accident, he's more of a calm, like he's more of like just a calm and caring man. Like yeah, like he's, he's really down yeah. to earth and like he's, he's not really dumb, like, but he's he's simple in the head yeah. a little bit. He, um, the the plot is described with him being almost childlike. You know, he, yeah. he he's this rich, successful lawyer. So he went from the hospital to going back to his home, which is obviously a big, expensive place. And he's in awe about how it looks. He's like, wow, this is so big and so pretty. You know, again, he's not stupid. It's just he's he's more simplified because of the brain damage. You know? Yeah, yeah, and like that doesn't sound like a Harrison Ford role, like normal. Well, no, because you but... are used to him in an action film, and this is pure mm -hmm. drama. I mean, you can list almost any other one of his films. Yeah, and, and, and this one's pure drama. And that's why it makes it so interesting to see like this new side of Harrison Ford, and honestly, he does pull it off pretty well. Like, yeah. it's kind of weird. It's, um, it do, like, when you watch it, it does make you wonder, like, how is it that you don't really see this side of Harrison Ford often? But I guess it's mostly because to cash in on the side that we all know. But still, it's, it's interesting to see that Harrison Ford that you would not think of. So, yeah. regarding Henry is absolutely worth a watch. Mm-hmm. And Working Girl, he's... Melanie Griffith cannot act! None of her movies she can act. And I like Working Girl! But, God, she can't act. She can't. <laughs> she really can't. You ever have an episode about her? I want in. Because it's really just gonna be an hour and a half of me just shaking my head. She, she Is Melanie act. Griffith in this? I just... I don't get it. No, she's in Working Girl. Working Girl. She's well, the lead working in Working Girl. Girl. 
Working Girl is an 88 romantic comedy drama. With Harrison Ford? Yes. And Sigourney Weaver. Oh, we're going to and see kind that of already? A, end of a cameo thing with uh, Alec Baldwin. Skinny young Alec Baldwin. Mm. No, we're not going into it. I'm just... I wanted She's the main mentioning... one to be regarding oh, okay. Henry, and I'm just mentioning Working Girl. Oh, okay. But, yeah. I mean, that's a hell of a... I mean, Sigourney and Harrison alone, that's... It's a hell of a combo, really. Of course, Sigourney mm. plays the bitch in it. So, it the I like the film. Mm-hmm. I just don't like Melanie in it. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I remember who, what other movies Melanie was in. I'm trying to... Milk Money. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Cherry 2000. Oh, my God. Not that film. Fuck's um. Sake. Yeah, Working Girl was one of her big ones. Uh, oh, A Stranger Among Us. Oh, Born Yesterday. I saw Born Yesterday. That has John Goodman in it. That's a remake, actually. Yeah. Um. Oh my god, I don't notice her in anything else here. She was in Viva Lovin? Lovin? Lo- the TV series that can't, got cancelled? Oh my god. Mm. She's on Raising Hope, and apparently on Hawaii Five O. There are three episodes. But yeah, uh, yeah she yeah, was yeah. popular in the eighties, late eighties, and such. Yep, yeah, she was totally. Eighties, nineties. Yep, yeah, that was the big thing. Um, anyways, there's... working girls are biggest thing actually. Yeah. Go is... figure. Still can't act though. She sounds like she's reading everything. <laughs> there's no emotion. There's nothing. There is nothing there. Anyways, and that was the rant, a rant about Melanie Griffin by Star. <laughs> um, wow, I just did through this really quick, actually. Um, uh, how much time do we still have? Time? Plenty. Oh, I like it. Plenty. Uh, like I said, we're just filling in time until working, but we can <laughs> definitely go into details on the second round of films. Okay. All right. So, oh crap! I gotta start. Oh, I remember. I thought you were gonna start by for some reason, but anyways. Um, okay, so the second film. I'll be very honest. Um, I have not. I have not seen a lot of uh, Harrison Ford movies. It doesn't really help either the fact that um, Harrison Ford has not made has not appeared in a single animated feature, which is kind of, which is interesting yet weird. The most that he has done is just the Star Wars Holiday Special. But anyways, um, the one that I want to talk about, the one, the other movie that I have seen that has Harrison Ford, oddly enough, is a little cameo that he has done in Bruno. Now, for those of you who don't know what Bruno is, it's basically one of those, um, is one of Sasha Baron Cohen's, uh, uh, like one of those mockumentary movies in which... Like, he goes out as this gay Austrian fashion guy or something. Yeah, yeah, a gay, uh, flamboyant Aus- Austrian fashionista Bruno. He decided, like, he wants to go and make it big in the U.S. and stuff like that. And he goes out and go, like, does all these crazy shenanigans. And at one point, he thinks one of the ways is to be straight. So, like, he does... I'll leave you guys, leave to your imagination, how does he do, like, how he would find ways to go straight. But anyways, the part with Harrison Ford in it is that there is this one scene, he decided to go and pitch his show to a, an American network. So, like, he does it, like, he shows, he shows it to all the executives and stuff like that, and things are going fine, it's like, Bruno's show is basically this talk show. It's like, hi, my name is Bruno. Welcome to my show. Coming soon, I'm going to do an interview with Harrison Ford. And like, throughout this whole time, there's just a bunch of filler. And I swear to God, half of it is just Sasha Baron Cohen doing a helicopter dick. And like, and apparently like even his, like his dick was singing and it had a mouth. I wasn't sure. I closed my eyes during that part because um, I, I actually watched it in theaters. And trust me, I don't want to see like in on the I don't want to see Sasha Baron Cohen's dick on the big screen. But then finally, 
it, the, the his show would end off as like finally the moment has arrived. It's like now it's time for my interview with Harrison Ford, and it's literally like just five seconds of Bruno. Um, acting a bit like MTV or a paparazzi is like, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, fuck off. And that's it. <laughs> so basically, we just had five, three to five seconds of just Harrison Ford walking and say, fuck off. And that was his moment in Bruno. As for the movie itself, I'll just say that it's really twisted. It's messed up beyond hell, but like if you're into that sort of thing, like if you're into Bor- if you can get into Borat, you're not gonna like it as much as Borat, but it has its charm, I guess. It does have a happy ending, I'll say that. I have not seen the film, so I, I tend to I tend to stay away from Sasha Baron Cohen's film unless he does make an appearance in another film I'm watching. It's like been a while Madagascar since I've seen would it. be an exception. And um it's kind of funny how you've mentioned Sasha Baron Cohen cuz he does make a cameo in Anchor Man 2, which also has a cameo by Harrison Ford. <clears throat> oh, actually before you go on to Anchor Man 2, I just want to mention a really funny story is that I mentioned that I watched Bruno on the big screen. It was actually the first time ever. I I was actually watching the it was during the time i was in theaters with me and my sister we were both watching bruno and my parents went to go see public enemies because they didn't want to see something as stupid as a sasha baron Cohen movie i think it was in the middle of the movie my sister gave up she's like that's it i'm done she walked out of the theaters and basically yeah. just went to go watch uh, public enemies with my parents Wow. And I was sitting here watching the rest of Bruno. Wow. She just got up and walked out. Yep. Wow. I, I always hear about people walking out of theaters and I just can't imagine. Wow. You know, the only time I recall myself experiencing that, I've never walked out of a theater. No. And I sat through Blair Witch. But that's the movie I've sat in where people literally got up and left in the middle of the movie. Oh, and uh, may, I forgot to mention... Um, when I was watching Bruno during that time, there were only like five people in the theater, including me and my sister. Um, oh, yeah, okay. That makes it worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, as you were saying, Mike? Yes, I was going to say, um, wow, wow. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. I'm a huge fan of the original film, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Absolutely, I quote that film as much as possible. I mean, it's very quotable. And when I heard the sequel came was was coming out, I was like, <coughs> "I'm gonna see it in theaters right away." Um, so Harrison Ford's in this film. He has a cameo. He plays this news anchor, this like veteran news anchor that uh, Ron Burgundy. Uh, tries to work with because he at the beginning of the movie he's, he's working at this national news station and i think harrison ford was one of his co-workers or bosses and um you, you see him at the beginning and then later on you see him at the towards the end and towards the end like in the first movie well actually in the first movie the, there's this big fight you might know with all the newscasters in san diego area and that was like towards the middle of the film at the end of the film of Anchorman 2, there's this huge, huge fight with more news anchors. And um, Harrison Ford comes out of nowhere, and Ron Burgundy's like, what are you doing here? You're too old for this. You can't fight in this. And he's he goes like, well, once in an early, full, early moon, I feel like a stallion. And he... All of a sudden, he transforms it as a hyena Just full-on transforms in it. And there's a cameo by Kanye West in this film. He plays um, this MTV news exec news reporter. And he's, he makes a joke like, Hey, I gotta tell uh, Michael Jackson about this. He, he's gotta love this idea. Hint, hint, towards Thriller. Wow. <laughs> I mean, and, and it was just mind-blowing. It's like, What? 
is a were hyena in this film? Ah! <laughs> it just blows my mind. And and as I'm reading about Harrison Ford and during production, he has he had no clue what he was doing. No clue at all. He didn't see the first film. He just was in this movie and he just was clueless can be. But <laughs> All I know is that I'm getting paid for this. Whatever. I'm just going to wing it and let's see what happens. I haven't seen Anchorman 2, but I do want to. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw this, I saw the theatrical version. Um, I couldn't be able to see the unrated or the other version with 723 uh, jokes in it. I couldn't see those. And I was kind of pissed off that the DVD didn't have those versions. But... Oh man, that fight scene alone is worth the watch because you got cameos from other people too. You got Sasha Baron Cohen as one of the leaders of the British News Network, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is hilarious. Oh man, I could tell you all about these cameos in this fight scene, and it just it, it just blows your mind. No, no, don't ruin it. I'm not gonna ruin it. I'm just saying those two cameos. The rest of the cameos are worth the watch. Cool. It just oh, I love it so much. Is it my turn for Working Girl now? Yep. Okay. So, Working Girl is a 1988 <laughs> romantic comedy drama film, and like I said, it has Melanie Griffith, Sigourney Weaver, and Harrison Ford. And basically, it's Melanie plays this secretary for a mergers and acquisition bank thing on Wall Street, and Sigourney Weaver's her boss, but Sigourney breaks her leg, so Tess kind of covers for her, but is... Her character is clever with the mergers and acquisitions and pitches her own ideas, claiming that she's the Sigourney Weaver character to Harrison Ford's character. And then, of course, her character and Harrison Ford character fall in love, yada, yada, yada. Um, I can't stand Melanie, but it's a good movie. Uh, Harrison's more the supporting character, obviously, and the love interest. But, um, again, it's one of those films you should check out at least one time um as much as i can't stand melanie i can put up with her in this and if you really want to see a very young skinny looking alec baldwin you definitely get that in this one because he's her original boyfriend in the beginning and it also has joan cusack in it too oh interesting all right yeah i know that sounds like a really boring thing i know it does but really the film is worth a shot and again, that one's called. Oh, Martin ladies Joe. and gentlemen, please, co- please applaud for the return of the stage, Morgan Ledger. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Olympus, the detergent of the gods. Notice how this fabric is so soft and. Oh, oh sorry. Yes. Notice how this. Notice how this fabric is so soft and quickly compared to this kind of fabric that's hard and pushy. Oh, yay, gods! You hear that? They solved the riddle. Yes. Yes. I saw what you died of. Seriously, if you have not seen the 12 Tass of Asterix, watch it! Oh my god, yeah. Morgan showed it to me, and that is really, that is really, like, a feel-good movie. That is, it's fun. And also, get me beers bouncing everywhere and in your face! (laughs) So, um, before we, uh, give the floor to Morgan, I wanted to kind of mention... Um, Anchorman 2 a bit, a little bit more. I, I mentioned earlier that Harrison Ford walked in with no knowledge of what's going on. He didn't know the first movie, and he just was like, I'm here for my paycheck or something, and the wear hyena bit was just freaking the best. So... Yeah, and then he kills Gary. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that, that was, sorry, that was in the R-rated version. <laughs> Shh, don't spoil it! No spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, I'm going to put this in the, 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 the video here so everybody can see this. Uh, uh, he, it's stupid why we would want to do it. Bless him, we worked a 16-hour long day with them, and the whole day we couldn't believe it was Harrison Ford. That was Will Farrow saying that. Morgan dropped out of the call for some odd reason. Isn't the show like almost over anyway? Yeah, Morgan. Ha- Morgan's. 
Yeah, it was. You'll have time for one, one for like probably one more. Yeah, we can yeah. we can actually squeeze more than we originally planned. You guys did. You guys did Blade Runner, right? Nope. No, we, not even. We save it all for you. We, just right. let me um. Uh. Uh. He. Harrison quoted, I never saw the original Anchorman. I got there and I had no idea who those guys were and I still don't know how they I don't I still don't know how they are and what they are doing cuz it's clearly unreleasable. <laughs> There's no way they're going to put this in theaters. Oh wait, they just did. Oh, crap. Yeah, Harrison said he received a little bit of money for it. Keyword being a little bit. A little bit. Yes, but what does a little bit mean for Harrison? Yeah, that's a good question. How much is a little bit in for a cameo? I'm gonna say like five million dollars tops. <laughs> for a for a cameo, for like a brief scene at the beginning, and then a, a full. Uh, <laughs> hey, he's Han Solo. He has a payoff job anyway. Um, that needs me to do is frozen and carbonate for fans of old generations. Yeah, so, the last quote by Harrison Ford on the, on the set of Anchorman 2, he said, uh, while working with the cast, he said, it was bizarre. They weren't all in the same scene as I did, and it was, it was just, what's his, what's his name, and the applesauce girl, which he was referring to Will Ferrell and to Crystal, Christina Applegate. Applesauce <laughs> girl. <laughs> applesauce girl. That applesauce girl. <laughs> that uh, should be her new nickname. <laughs> Christina Applegate, Christ- the applesauce girl. <laughs> no, Christy, Christina Applesauce girl. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Now I get it. Harrison Ford's joke. Because <laughs> well, a- 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 apple, apple sauce. Oh, she's the applesauce girl. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Check out Anchorman 2. It's it's definitely a good. It's one of those sequels. It's just like, ah. Um. Anyways, let's give Morgan the floor because he's got to talk about his two films. I'm actually gonna start with the underrated and then go with the more popular choice. Um. This is one you guys probably may or may not have seen. Hopefully you've seen it. It's called Witness. And it's from the 1980s, and it's about Harrison Ford as an FBI agent. And it starts off with this little Amish family going into modern territory. I can't remember the reason why. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But um, the little kid witnesses a mafia intervention. And, of course, Harrison Ford has to protect them. And the next thing you know, he gets involved in the whole thing. What does he do? He's on the lam. Simple. Hide with the Amish. Oh, the open possibilities. An FBI agent in an area where there's no technology has to resort to nonviolent technicalities and has to deal with the average ordinary day of farm life. And it's a very unique concept, and I'm surprised that no one is taking that idea and really modernizing it, like, you know, for comedy purposes. I think the closest they did was um, for Richard or Poor with Tim Allen. That's they a were cute two... movie. Oh, yeah, that was that was actually pretty good. Him and Kirstie Alley, they got to make more movies together. Um, <laughs> anyway, Witness is actually a far more interesting as an action film alone, and I saw this in a really interesting time during community college because the college professor during film studies said it had the tendencies of a Western. And... At first, I didn't get why, because we were studying westerns like My Darling Clementine, High Noon, Unforgiven. Um, I think, yeah, I think those are the studies for westerns. And after seeing those and comparing it to Witness, I can understand why. It has the typical cliches of new guy going into the old town, um, trying to spruce up the old town or just simply you know dealing with the cliches of it um something new is being built in this case it's a barn there's a huge showdown intervention and then at the end um said hero has a choice of staying in the old town or just moving on to the next one and looking back at it now yeah it has those cliches of a western only they're so 
subtly underlaid that you don't really realize it. You just see it as a fish out of water story, but played up for action tendencies. Hugo Mortensen's in that one, right? Yeah, I think so. There's even a, a scene where Harrison Ford is, you know, riding with them. There's these, you know, modern hip, hipster yuppie people coming in. They're teasing him and throwing ice cream in their faces. And then, you know, Harrison Ford, he can't take any of this. He you know, clobbers one of them, breaking Amish rule. <laughs> it's such a great, great sequence. And, you know, it has something for action fans. Again, something for Western fans. So if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it to a T. I don't understand why people um, haven't talked about this. And it's weird because when people, you know, like you guys, for example, I say, oh, you probably never saw a witness. Oh, we have what? How is this possible? Yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not supposed to know. Well, except for Sarah. You guys aren't supposed to know this movie. It does not make sense. Except for Sarah. By the way, apparently, just just saw this right now. Apparently, Witness is his only Oscar nomination for Best Actor. Holy shit! Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Best Actor in a Leading Role. Witness wow. he was nominated for an Oscar. Wow! Wow! That's... Nineteen nineteen eighty five. And even and he, it even uh, Witness even won or oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oops. I thought it was Witness, but no, it was... No, it's just Harrison Ford that won the Cecil B. DeMille Award. <laughs> never mind. I thought it was I thought it was Witness itself that got the Cecil B. DeMille No, never mind. Mm. Anyways, no, but I remember I saw Witness, and I think when I first saw it, it was, like, during the middle of the movie, and it was just... Just when you watch it out of context... It's like the weirdest thing, and in a way, it's kind of unintentionally funny. Mm. It's freaking Harrison Ford as as a Namish. Like I said, the scene with the yuppies like, bullying them with the, the ice cream. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, what, Harrison Ford, what are you doing? It's like, he's probably one of the, like, like I mentioned in um, when we talked about one of Sarah's movies, I, I forgot what it is already. But, um, regarding Henry or Working Girls? Regarding Henry. It's, this is one of those roles... Oh, you, 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 you guys talked about Working Girl? Briefly. Briefly. <laughs> Very briefly. Yeah. No, but anyways... Loved him in that. Uh, no, anyways, Harrison Ford... Like, that's one of those roles in which you would never see Harrison Ford in. You're, would anyone ever go hire Harrison Ford to be an Amish? I mean, seriously... You cannot see him go plowing and stuff like that when he's known to be like, it's like it's freaking Han Solo working on the plow or like freaking Indiana Jones, per, like working in the church, you know? Yay, yay, brother Chewbacca, fire up the horse and bug into the falcon. The most you can see Harrison Ford as an Amish is in an episode of Amish Mafia. Like, that's it. Oh. oh my god, yeah. We must my pay name is Jabba Jabba. <laughs> oh, we must god. pay Brother Jabba, or otherwise he'll trample us with his own set of horses. Oh, I can't believe that exists. Oh my Stay god. Stay down there, son. I gotta go cu- I gotta go kick Jebediah's ass. Father, are you sure the Lord will please you? <laughs> I'll show him where the Lord won't shine. Yay, Brother Solo, I love you. I know, Jebediah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I saw a couple episodes of that show. <sighs> I remember I saw that on vacation. That was so stupid. It's it is. Funny. Plus the fact they don't reveal... There's like so many things they can't reveal on TV. It's like, I can't say that on TV. <laughs> because it's all the rules. It's a part of the Amish ways. It's like... You know, you're not allowed to have electronics in there, yet you're talking to a camera? What's the fridge? Kind of breaks reality when you think about it. Yeah, really. And that was a brief discussion about Amish Mafia. (laughs) Tune in next time where we talk about our favorite characters in Pawn Stars. (laughs) Daffy! Dammit, (laughs) Trumler. (laughs) <laughs> um, so the best is to save for last Blade Runner 
Go on. It's just... Yeah. This is probably in a ranking of my top 50 favorite movies. This is a number three. That's how much I love this movie. It's a noir story. It's a remake of... It's a remake of Metropolis. It's um, The Fugitive. It's... Um, Is this like a, a fully Metropolis remake? No, no, no it's, it's, a style. Um, it's like Metropolis. Okay, it's a Metropolis influenced film with a Japanese and say version of Los Angeles in uh, two thousand and seventeen. Thank you to that. Thank you, two thousand seventeen. And here you have Harrison Ford. Just from that this... description, that sounds like it could be easily mistakable for the Metropolis remake, like that Japanese anime one. <laughs> yes, seriously, seriously, it has the style of an anime, surprisingly enough, but it's very live action-y. Um, you have Harrison Ford as Decker, this retired Blade Runner, who's pretty much the only job is to hunt down these droid-like beings called replicants, who are almost like humans, but they have a shorter lifespan, and they're used for mining and salt areas and going to distant planets. And his job is to hunt these replicants down and, what else? Shoot them. Um, and it's very, very interesting seeing this character. He's channeling Han Solo, but in sort of a different way, sort of a very noir um, Dick Tracy kind of mode, but in a very futuristic setting. He knows this job. He knows he's just doing it for a simple paycheck. But at the same time, he doesn't want to do it. And the question is, why? And if you've seen the director's cut and the final cut in the work print, it somehow illusions the idea that he's possibly a replicant himself. Yeah. Yeah. Which, again, I'm not going to go too no, far into don't, it. Don't, that's a whole it, theory all, itself. Yes, and even if you talk about that sci-fi convention, it'll drag you by your ass. Mm -hmm. um, even much more than the Tagana regenerating thing from Doctor Who. Anyway, um, it's in Day of the Daleks. That Destiny of the Daleks, sorry. It's in Destiny of the Daleks. Um, but here, it's that idea of, you know, why doesn't he want to hunt them down? Is it because he thinks they're just... He doesn't want to do his job again, or just because he thinks there's some form of humanity. And the interesting thing is when we see these replicants in action, these, you know, four fugitives, we're actually close to actually siding with them. And that's interesting. You never get that with villains in certain films, except, you know, others I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, recently, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, where they give reasons for both sides, reasons for why they hate each other, reasons for why they want their own goals and methods. And... Blade Runner truly represents that. You have Decker, who's just doing this as his job, even though he doesn't want to do this sort of thing. And you have the replicants that want more life because, well, they have a shorter lifespan. They want to experience the ultimate feeling of going on a few extra years. Even if they have to, you know, pull out somebody's eyes to do that sort of thing or kill someone. They just want the ultimate goal. And I think it makes more sense in the director's cut and the final cut when the leader of the gang goes to see the creator and says, I want more life, Father. That's Frankenstein meets its own creation. It's the ultimate theory of what's it like to have your own creation walk up to you and say, hey, I have flaws, fix me. It's just very quintessentially interesting. The fact that you have these people that want the ultimate goal, and yet in the end, they can't achieve it because they were made that way. They were crafted that way. It's the ultimate flaw, and they have to live with it. They don't want to live with it. And yet, at the same time, you really feel bad for them just because of it. They're so close to being human, aside from one small thing. And then you have Decker, on the other hand, who just, you know, has his sympathy, but it's like, I'm sorry, I gotta gun you down. It is what it is. The scene where he kills the hooker, or is the the da sorry the dancer sorry I meant to say the dancer mm -hmm. um, with with the snake skin and stuff they yeah. prefer to be called entertainers <laughs> okay okay Enter the the entertainers with the snake um, mm -hmm. he, he sees no joy in it he doesn't see any joy in killing that person especially mm -hmm. considering how she you can see the pain in her she's going through glass after glass and he's just shooting her down and he looks down and he sees the pop body he sees no join that he doesn't look down and say well, one down he looks and goes good god and it's funny to note that when harrison ford was doing this movie um there was some studio interference on the side and 
when they began to re-edit this movie to make it, you know, upbeat for audiences. They wanted some narration to clarify some things about plot elements and stuff. And in a way, I guess it adds a very noirish kind of layer. And if you're confused about the film, it does help. But it's funny because even Harrison Ford himself said he recorded those lines so poorly he hoped that they wouldn't use it in the movie. <laughs> but they did. <sighs> schmucks, schmucks. I but... mean, it, it, it does add to the theatrical cut because, again, it's a futurist noir film. And it's a great throwback to the detective stories of the 1930s and 40s, like the Maltese Falcon, um, and again, Dick Tracy in general. So in that sense, it does kind of work. But at the same time, you're just so embellished in the environment, the characters, that, again, you don't know who to root for. You don't know who to you know, work with. It's just an all-out incredible experience. Though I will say this, though. The narration at the end... When one of the big characters is having its Elephant Man moment, and then the Elephant Man moment happens, and you have Decker's voiceover explaining it. Oh. Why? Oh, oh right, why? right, right, right. I know what just, you... just why. I was seeing that scene, and I just kept saying to myself, no, I want to be in the moment. I know what the frick happened. Don't explain it to me like a teacher. Yep, yeah. The, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Fun you, fact: the 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 upbeat ending of theatrical cut. Some of that footage was outtakes from The Shining. The only compromise that Stanley Kubrick said was, "Don't use any shots that I used in my movie, or I am suing your dicks." Wow. Okay. Okay. Maybe not that last part, but you get the idea. Mm-hmm, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I did not know that. I. Wanted to see Blade Runner for the longest time, and I was like, I knew there was a bunch of versions. I didn't know which version to watch, but I, I decidedly went with the final cut, because that was the final really Scott cut that, you know, he pushed out. I watched it, and it made me think for the longest time, because it's so dense with themes and characters, and it makes you wonder about the story and the characters. And I don't get that often. I watched senseless movies, and Blade Runner changed it for me. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it. I don't remember too much. Really? Uh, it's honestly Blade Runner is like top five for me. Not even the flying cars. Mm -mm. For the for... the most I remember is him chasing after somebody and he goes through a window. I, no, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's that's all I got. That, that's the dancer that goes through the window. Yeah. Whatever. Somebody goes through a window. Yeah. Right. And the big speech in the rain. That's that's all I got. Yeah, it's the iconic scene. Yeah. Not Which, even the that Asian was ad lived. Nope. I've only <laughs> seen it like once or half of once. Such a good movie. It is such a great movie. It's like. Mm -hmm, great movie. If 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 you want to see Harrison Ford in a great movie, you gotta see Blade Runner, and. Final Cut is actually where your shoe should be going. And if you want to see a shitty movie, go watch Bruno. <laughs> We've just talked about that, by the way. <laughs> I hate that movie. Really? I hate that movie with a passion. Every time I see it in my re in the retail store I work at on the shelves, I cringe inside. I literally cringe inside. <laughs> well, should I repeat that story to Morgan <laughs> you're, about you're, me in the cinema? I was. Yeah, you should just mention it to him. Okay, Morgan, I just, me mention, Bruno. Nee, nee, nee. Ah. I just want to mention, Morgan, I actually went to see Bruno in theaters, and I went with my sister. And apparently we were just only six in the theaters. I think my sister can feel the same for you, because um, during the middle of the movie, she walked out of the theater. And she went to join with my parents to go watch Public Enemies. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah, so you're not I alone. I stayed, though. I watched the whole movie. I saw Bruno turn into straight Dave. Oh, spoiler alert. Oh. It doesn't care. That movie's stupid. <laughs> My name is straight Dave. I like to fight bears and have sex with women. <laughs> I get that Sasha Baron Bonin, whatever. Cohen. Conan, 
Thank you. <laughs> Sasha Bong and Carter, what? <laughs> I get what he's trying to do. I get it. But the fact he's doing it in the same style as Borat, the fact that he's pranking these people just for a film and a point, and even though he could... Board. Yeah, exactly. Even though he could just do this in, I don't know, a movie, instead of something exploitational like uh, Jackass or anything of that much, but to the biggest extreme... No, he's pretty much making it as a mockumentary, that's the thing. I know what he's doing. I get it. He's going on the public and saying, oh, this is how lower class, cla- class are treated. I get that. But for the love of God... Does he have to go through this much trouble? I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm feeling bad with these people more than just laughing at the stuff he's doing. And the fact that the character is so stereotypical, it annoys me. I'm sorry. I have close people who are homosexuals. Hell, I'm bisexual myself, and this person just annoys me like coal up my ass. And that was Morgan's random Bruno. <laughs> I go further, but I don't want it to go longer because no. if it goes longer, it's gonna fill up the whole episode. Yeah, and <laughs> it wasn't. You didn't even talk about Harrison Ford's cameo in it at all. So that yeah. was the only funny thing. That, that was the only. I'll a... give it that much. That's the only funny thing. And then it goes to the talking penis and just kills it. Then that's why I meant, Matt mentioned that. So yeah. Yeah, that that, that is... was half of the that was half of the thing. It was just Sasha Baron Cohen's helicopter dick. I couldn't even like I couldn't even watch that. Because keep in mind, I saw it on the big screen. I don't want to see, like, that was like, what, five feet of uh, Sasha Baron Cohen dick flying around? Here's here's my theory. When Sasha Baron Cohen is a supporting character, he's fine because he's limited and he's playing off of people. Hugo, where he's the the security guard with the little dog... I Dean that Julian worked. in Madagascar. Think, yeah, that yeah. really worked. That's well, a great though, example. Even in, well, you, even in all three, three well, of the films, King Julian was hilarious. Well, he annoyed me in part two. Not, not that much. That's so funny. Mm. funny. He, 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 was little, still, he was a Still, uh, yeah. I am a Madagascar fan, so... Yeah, he, he, they, they wired him down a little in the third one, so that was fine. Mm. Um, Les Mis, he was playing off of Helen Bonham Carter. Mm. Or at least he... You know, had some good moments, but when he's a main character and soaking this all up, that's when it loses me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you're like, right. Yeah. It's like there's 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 way, way too much of him. When he's trogged down a little, it's fine. It, it's the Danny McBride principle all over again. Actually, funny enough about Sasha Baron Cohen and the Misa Hab, I know this is a it's a Broadway show from like the '80s and stuff like that. But when he was in the Miz. All I could see is his role in Sweeney Todd. It doesn't help either that he was next to freaking to Helena Bottom Carter. Like, mm. like uh, I I don't I ne- I didn't hear Master of the House. All I saw is Try Pirelli's Miracle Alexa. Alexa, true, sad, true. <laughs> Who's the master of the house now, Johnny Depp? <laughs> Tim Burton's not here. Time to celebrate. <laughs> my band of folks, my den of dissolutes. Um, since um, we have some time, uh, about 11 minutes left, uh, I should mention the obvious one. We didn't fully talk okay. about his role as Han Solo in Star Wars. Yeah, I, I was know. thinking, like, if we have enough time, like, we, we can, can do that, so. Um, Matt mentioned Indiana Jones, and his other big thing was Han Solo in Star Wars, and... Ooh, this... Ender's Game. You get... If, if you want to mention Ender's Game, that's fine, because I have never seen it before, so I'll drop it to you! Me neither. It was, it was okay. It, it mm. was just okay. It's pretty much Han Solo doing Full Metal Jacket in space with a bunch of young cadets that are fighting against bug aliens in a Starship Troopers kind of setting. That's the whole movie in a nutshell. Did he? Was he? He had a. He was like gruffy, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a very gruffy, gruffy kind of voice, kind of like if Clint Howard swallowed more gravels to do the ice cream man. Oh movie. yeah. Ah, so like it's pretty much your typical Harrison Ford role. Yeah, that that voice. Yeah, because he he was doing the same thing in Cowboys and Aliens, and um. 
I, I guess he's trying to like Lee Arv Erming only in a more Diet Coke, not as harsh fashion. Diet Coke I, sucks. <laughs> Diet it does. It tastes horrible. Diet Pepsi's okay, although I think they changed it. Okay, Diet Pepsi of Lee Irvin or me. I just want to make the illusion better so you're not upset at me. <laughs> I'm just By saying, the... Diet Coke tastes horrible. I don't, I don't know how anybody drinks that shit. Just, By the, just say uh, the Diet Soda of blah blah blah, not just... I, sorry. There you go. Just Diet be generic. Be, no, yeah. be just generic. Did you, like... Okay, the sugar-free gummy bear of Lee Armour. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whatever. Um, by the I way, I, I just want to mention one thing. On the IMDb page, apparently Ender's for Ender's Game, what IMDb is telling us is that people who like Ender's Game also, uh, also like After Earth. <laughs> Denied! Seriously, that was the first one. <laughs> Oh my god, it's bad. Um, Can I watch Ender's Game instead of After Earth? Do not do sit not. down! God. Take a knee. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh my god, my gummy bears changed colored. I think it's bad, but it looks cool. <laughs> um, Han Solo was one of his iconic roles. He plays... Everybody should know who Han Solo is. Everybody should know who the character is. He's just a badass in the film. And honestly, Harrison Ford wanted Han Solo to die. Oh, yeah. But George Lucas didn't want to. Mm. Um, Someone said Chewbacca died. (laughs) Seriously, they dropped a moon on him in the comics. Wait, who? Han Solo or Chewie? Chewie. Chewie! Chewie! They dropped a moon on Chewie! Jeez! Wow, so... that's, that's... Wow. Wow, they gave him, like, the... So, practically, they gave Chewie the Majora's Mask treatment? Yep. Oh, Jeanette. I'm not explaining it. Look it up yourselves. No, yeah, look it up. Look it up, it's boys. Now, like, all I see is just Chewbacca looking up, and it's like... It's like, close to him is just like a moon going, like... Hello, I'm the moon. I think we're going to be good friends. I know we're just going to be good friends at some point, because I have a nice critical grin. You seem like a very interesting fuzzball right there. Oh, I think I'm getting closer than I imagined. Hello there, little one. Don't want to find you just a little. Um, I feel violated. So does everyone else watching this. <laughs> You're not the only one. Leave in the comments below if you feel violated by Morgan. I felt violated at the beginning. What are you guys talking about? This is what happens when I'm on gummy beers. <laughs> um, a cow- Cowboys and Aliens wasn't his first rodeo. Uh, he actually started an- in a western back in 79. I believe it was called the Frisco Kids alongside Gene Wilder. Um, I, s- I was... It was on TV one day, and I saw it very briefly. I didn't see the whole movie, but based on what I saw, Harrison Ford was a bank robber, and he meets up with Gene Wilder, who is this Jewish um, guy who's uh, traveling out west to marry somebody. And hilarity ensues as they try to travel back to California. Was this before Blazing Saddles? Uh, good question. I... Trying to think. <sighs> Frisco, Francisco kid was a friend of mine. Did Harrison Ford sing "What a Wonderful World" in Witness? <laughs> what? I've, I'm looking at his IMDb page, and it's like he has one credit in soundtrack, and it says he's a performer for the song "Wonder What a Wonderful World." Apparently. Huh. Tell us in the comments below if he did. Uh, where am I here? Uh, no, this is after Blazing Saddles. Okay. Yeah, Blazing Saddles was 74, and Frisco Kid was 70, 79. Just curious. Yeah, so... 
if you like westerns and you wanted to see him pair up with Gene Wilder at a very young role, at a young age, check out Frisco Kid if possible. Wow, I wasn't expecting this. We've got like five minutes left. Any last, any last thoughts about Harrison Ford and his films? Nope. Just anxious to see what's going to happen in the next Star Wars. Aside from his broken ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Harrison Ford. What? What can we say, man? He's pretty much. He's pretty much a shining example of. Um, of like those action actors, like those action movie actors, and pretty much. He's pretty much, he's the icon of possibly some of the biggest roles that we know today, like Indiana Jones and Star Wars. And now that he's growing old, he'll go down in the retirement home of the Expandables and the Expandables 3. Yep. Hey, did we talk about Jack Ryan? No. No? What's Jack Ryan again? Uh, Clear and Present Danger, Patriot Games. Wait, wait. What year is it? Fudge and have it. Where they were, are they were in They were in the early 90s. Yeah, Jack Ryan is a character that he played. Oh, oh, clear and present danger. Yeah. Looks yeah. too, looks really America-y. Was yeah, it? It's a very, it's like American political thriller. Oh, yeah. no, is it, is it like, is it like Olympus has fallen where it's like, um, all the symbolism is like, oh no, America is in trouble. Uh, Gerard Butler's got to save America. Actually, it's more like a Hunt for the Red October. Yeah. yeah. Is, isn't it the same? Isn't isn't that in the series too? Jack Ryan films. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, a month can also be a color. But uh, okay. Still, at least uh, Harrison Ford is known for. The obligatory one-note cameo that made it to the cutting room floor, and yet he's still famous for it. You're talking about E.T., aren't you? The principal in E.T. Yeah. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Mm. There's actually footage of it they showed a documentary on a laser disc I have somewhere. It's online as well. It's like just sitting there in shadow going, Tell my boy, what is it? Is it LSD, PCP, all the new stuff the kids are doing? He's just... Putting his foot up and just tying his shoes, and his back is towards Elliot, and it's like, really? That's Harrison Ford? I mean, I mean, Spielberg' angle is not to show the faces, but when you hear his voice, it's like, Han Solo is the principal of my school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yet, yeah. and yet, throughout the whole scene, E.T. is trying to levitate his stuff up the stairs. And someone makes Elliot's chair levitate, and Harrison Ford does not see this. He doesn't hear the thump when he's talking to Elliot about it, whether he's not doing stuff after releasing all the frogs in the science class. Hello! Maybe there's a reason why that got cut. On the Maybe. Cut, on the cutting room floor. Well, I think we Harrison Ford out of this. Um, yeah. Let's just say happy birthday, Harrison Ford. If you happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, Ford. If you happy ever, birthday. ever come across this, happy birthday. Which I doubt. You should, you should have won that Oscar for the Where Hyena. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whenever there's a full moon, I feel like a stallion again. It was early moon. Oh, that's what it was. Early moon, I feel like a stallion. Whoa, <gasps> Michael Jackson, I got a music video idea. <laughs> oh, man, yep. God, I love that. Well, yep, so the next episode, we're not going to do Cinema Password because everybody basically knows, um, besides yep. Star, which... She's a bit bad. Um, Is she pretty, pretty bad? We're going to talk about uh, favorite films of our birth year. So we're going to go through each of our birth years and talk about one or two or more, if time permits, about what films from our uh, year. So, like, for example, Matt was born 92, Morgan was born 1990, I was born 1989, James was born 1984, 
and so forth. And oh, 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 my year is going to be amazing. Hey, I have a pretty good year, too, so... Yeah. I think I can narrow down a few things I could talk about. Aside from the shitty Lord of the Flies remake, I can nitpick about something. Oh, yeah, I had the fucking turtles. <laughs> yeah, you... Yeah. Yeah, dude. He's got the turtle. He's got the turtles, man. Man, I got... I got the I got the peak of uh, of Disney animation, so I got yeah. options. I've got sequels. I got Henson's last movie, and it came on my birthday. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. That was Matt. That was Morgan. That was Star. Bye. See you later, dudes. Give me beer. By the way, I left some gummy bears in my room. Gummy bears. <laughs> A quote from Little Karibo. Spaceship.